Hello and welcome to my studio. It's Lois here from Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. And I'm continuing on yesterday's theme of tree practice. And I'm going to be using exactly the same methods as I used in the practice yesterday to paint this autumnal scene. Um, so it'll be starting off wet in wet and then moving on to wet on dry painting. So the wet in wet will just be getting in the softly diffused background and the colours are roughly in place in light value and mid value. And then the wet on dry painting will be bringing in the darker values and a little bit more detail. This is the photograph from Pixabay that I'm using as inspiration. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. This was quite a long painting, so I've sped it up. Um, so you'll be watching the time-lapse version of this. But I had a lot of fun with this practice and I really think I sort of got somewhere. Even though it didn't entirely work out as I had it in my mind, I was really happy with it as a practice. If you're interested in the kind of techniques that I used, then please watch yesterday's demo, which goes into my process in more detail. Today's colours will be Payne's Grey, Indigo, Sap Green, Raw Umber, Raw Sienna, and burnt sienna.
I hope you can see or have noticed that most of this painting is like a, a backwards and forwards between negatively painting the tree trunks and branches around the softly diffused wet in wet foliage that I painted in in the first wash um, and then going into those areas and painting wet on dry to make some sort of calligraphic brush stroke and stronger marks and richer colours um, so that it gives the illusion of the leaves growing out in front of the trees, hopefully. I don't think it's a perfect technique, but it's a start. And that's what practice is all about, is having an idea and then, <clears throat> excuse me, trying to put that idea into practice. And I'll just continue with the same, darkening up some of the shadowy areas and adding a bit more definition where I think it needs it, just to bring the painting together to finish it off. I think the painting is nearly finished and I'm liking it so far. I think this is an experiment that's working. I'm beginning to actually really see the potential for this technique for creating the effects that I want. So again, another really good starting point. I'm removing the tape so I can look at it with a clean white border, which of course helps me to see it with fresh eyes. And I can go back in and adjust some of the values and a few bits and bobs here and there just for some finishing touches. And where my tree colour has lightened up as it's dried, I can replace that dark by adding another layer of the same colour. And by using glazes, one on top of the other, we can increase the, the intensity of our value and get down to some really nice, strong, rich darks. But placing them exactly where we want them so that the light, bright foliage still stands out really nicely, um, giving the impression that the leaves are growing out in front of the trees and the branches. I think I'm going to just add one more sort of stick or branch growing out from the base of the trunk here. I think that helps to sort of link across from one side, one group of trees on the left to the group of trees on the right. It's nice to keep that sort of fairly open, empty gap in the middle.
Well, I hope if you've watched this through to this stage that you've um, realised how valuable practice like this can be. Um, It gives you the chance to explore ideas and even if things don't work perfectly, um, you can see in practice um, what happens when you do what what you sort of think you want to do. And I'm really pleased with this technique. Um, As I say, I don't think it's perfect, but it's a starting point for me for further practices to try and sort of get the looseness um, a little bit looser, if you see what I mean, to try and also get the trees to look a bit more fluent, um, a little less static, because if there's any criticism that I have of this, it will be that it does look quite static Um, It's not as loose as I'd like it to be, but I'm a firm believer in the idea that when you first practice, you often try out a composition and it feels quite tight and quite detailed because you're coming at it using your full skills and powers of observation. And only when you've worked out the scene correctly like that, can you then begin to understand the scene well enough to be able to refine it and remove anything that's sort of unnecessary so that you end up with some very loose work. Well, thank you so much for joining me in my studio again today while I'm practising my trees. I hope you found that helpful in some way and that it'll encourage you if you've got something that you really would like to um, learn how to paint or improve upon, um, then to develop a sort of a, um, a regular practice this year will help you to explore that area and to progress. Many thanks for watching and many thanks for your support. And thank you so much to everyone that supports us on Patreon. Right, I'm back to the studio now and I'm going to continue practicing my trees and then I'm going to move on to some sky practice. I'll see you soon then.